um, uh, from the thought triple threat. Uh, just type that in, triple threat, triple threat, triple threat. Praise the Lord. And I want to build on the foundation of where we were on Sunday. Bless the Lord. Well, we uh, gave, I believe, amen, a very uh, word um, for the times that we're in, a clarion word from God, amen, a call for us to rise up, praise the Lord, a call for us to rise up and be who God has called um, us to be. Uh, the Bible says out of Isaiah, we came from, bless the Lord, that you shall not go by haste or by flight for the Lord your God will go before you, amen, and he will also be your rear guard. Praise God, amen. And so, in other words, we have promise, we have provision that God is with us no matter what we go through. And I believe it's time for the church of the living God, amen, to rise up in our power, rise up in our authority, amen, and and um, and. and walk in what God has called us to be. And one of the things, if we're going to be the church that God has called us to be, we have to be proficient in the fundamentals. Amen. We have to be proficient in the fundamentals. Sometimes we want to be super deep and all wonderful, and we forget the tenets of faith. Sometimes we've been saved for so long, and we think we know it all, we think we have it all, and we forget the very tenets of faith or the foundational things. But how many know if you keep your foundation intact, amen, bless the Lord, if you do things that keep a sure foundation, I don't care if the storm comes and beat against your house, I don't care, bless the Lord. What happens in life? If your foundation is strong, you're going to stand. Amen. And so I want to make sure that as the body of Christ, amen, that we are that we are grounded in the fundamentals, praise the Lord. And oftentimes when you begin to talk about fundamentals, it isn't real glamorous. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because we think fundamentals are just practice. Praise the Lord. But oftentimes it's the day in and day night, day in and out things that we do consistently. Amen. That would help us prove to be strong. Now, if you go through anything, any coach will tell you that the lack of attention to fun to, uh, the lack of attention to fundamentals may not show up. Praise the Lord or hurt you in the short term. Lack of fundamentals, it may not hurt you or show up in the short term. But ultimately, ultimately, the lack of attention will be exposed and cause you to lose in the long term. In other words, fundamentals are things that must be brushed up uh, on constantly. Foundational things must be brushed up on constantly. How many know that practice is crucial for us to perform? So as I uh, before I read our scripture tonight, if you were to look at the game of basketball, praise the Lord. Uh, you know, there's a position, bless the Lord, in basketball, amen, termed uh, a triple threat. Praise the Lord. In fact, it's one of the things, amen, that you may learn in basketball. What is a triple th threat position? Praise God. It is a triple threat position because it positions you to do three things. Praise the Lord. You can pass, you can dribble, and you can shoot. So if you can do those things and do them well, praise the Lord, you're just not a one-trick pony, all right? You can pass, you can dribble, and you can shoot. It's when you master the fundamentals that you are a formidable opponent on the court, and it takes all of the, those elements to complete. As it is in the natural, praise the Lord. Listen, because you got to understand, if all you can do is shoot, then I'll guard you and keep you from shooting. If all you can do is pass, then I, don't, I won't worry about your shot. I will lay off you, praise the Lord, and just pay the, pay the, uh, play the passing lanes. If all you can do is dribble, then you are stuck for sure and won't be effective because all you can dribble but you can't shoot and you can't pass. So in other words, bless the Lord, if we're going to be well-rounded in the spirit, there's some fundamental things that you and I have to walk in. Is that all right? It's some basic kingdom principles that never go out of style, that never loses power, and will cause you to walk in victorious living in every place in your life. Turn with me to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Bless the Lord. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 1 through 8, and then we're going to skip down to verse 16 through 18. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 1 through 8, and then I'm going to skip down to verse 16 through 18. It says, be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, 
you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues on the streets to be honored by men. I'll tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. But I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room and close the door and pray to your father, who is unseen. Then your father who sees what you've done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. And skip, we're going to skip to verse 16. And when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only your Father which is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if you need another church, says he will reward you openly. Now, now, I'm not talking about basketball tonight, but I am talking about uh, some uh, spiritual tenets tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Notice, if you will, in this text, Jesus deals with three when, W-H-E-N, areas in your life. Jesus deals with three wins, W-H-E-N, areas in your life. He's making the assumption that we will be doing these three things. Why? Because he, hallelujah, recognizes that these three things are fundamental to your Christian walk as a believer. And he's actually saying, I expect you to do these three things on a regular basis. In other words, hallelujah, I expect you to do these things, so let me give instructions on how to do it and how not to do it. He's saying, don't think of yourself as some super great spiritual giant, hallelujah, a believer if you do these things. But in other words, these things are fundamental. I wonder how many of us approach these things, these three areas, praise the Lord, as an if and not when. Oh, I'm going to talk tonight. I wonder how many of us approach these three areas as an if and not when. What am I talking about? If I give, if I pray, if I fast. Three areas that Jesus talked about in Matthew 6, bless the Lord, hallelujah, was talking about giving, talking about prayer, and talking about fasting. It wasn't a matter of if I give, if I pray, and if I fast. No, no, no. It's practice. It all comes down to practice. It all comes down to discipline. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Not if, but I will give, I will pray, and I will fast. And I'll do it, not just when the lights is on and when the crowd is gathered. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But there are some things between me and God. There are some things that I may operate in that nobody else may know my business. That's why you don't have to tell all your business to get a reward. Come on here. Bless the Lord. The Lord knows. Amen. Hallelujah. Even the secret things that are done. Praise the Lord. And he said that he will reward you openly. See, too many of us, praise the Lord, fail uh, to be a threat because we're trying to live on ifs and not when. Come on. The triple threat that Jesus reveals that makes us a threat to the enemy, watch this, is giving, praying, and fasting. I said three things that make us a threat to the gates of hell is giving, praying, and fasting. Now listen, this may not be glamorous stuff. It's basics. It's basic, but it's essential for victory. I said it's basic, but it's essential for victory. So I want us to look at each one of those. Amen. And I think you're going to extract something from the text tonight. My first point, giving. Somebody type that in, giving. Praise the Lord. If you're going to be a threat, glory to God, you have to be a giver. We know the old saying that says you can't outgive God. Well, my question is, when was the last time you tried? 
See, Jesus assumed, <coughs> Jesus assumed that we would be the kind of people that would be marked by generosity, that he had better give us some instructions on how to give. Hallelujah. He told us how to do these things because there was an expectation that as believers, you would be doing those things. His instructions on how to give is important. But to me, what's even more important is the assumption or expectation that his people would be generous. Jesus knows that in order for us to be a threat to opposition, that we must be willing to give. Give me 2 Corinthians 9th chapter, verse 6 through 11. 2 Corinthians 9th chapter, verse 6 through 11. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things and all times, having all that you need and that you will abound in every good work. For it is written, he that scatter abroad gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower, y'all know this scripture, and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge your harvest of your righteousness. And you will be made rich in every way so that you will be generous on every occasion. Through, uh, through us, your generosity will, will result in thanksgiving to God. He said that you will be made rich so that you can be generous. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. So my question tonight is, are you a threat through your generosity? Praise the Lord. And so Jesus gave some instructions about giving that were very simple and very straightforward. The first thing he said is give, but don't make a show of giving. Or oh, am I helping you tonight? Hallelujah. Give, but don't make a show of giving. Hallelujah. We don't give to get our name on a plaque or on a chair. In fact, Jesus says that if we give that way, then we've already received our reward from man. In other words, if your only motivation of giving is to be seen and man applauds you, then that is your reward. Instead, he said we're supposed to give, praise the Lord. And even if you don't get any recognition or acknowledgement, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Even if you give and you don't get a thank you, would you rather have a man's thank you or God's thank you? Come on here. Bless the Lord. Now, I know that God will bless you and you will get recognition in the natural, and that's a wonderful thing. But you got to understand that even if you don't get it to the level you think you should get it, praise the Lord, you do not have a heavenly father who is unjust that will forget your labor of love. See, and, and, when, and when you use this weapon of giving, it's all about your attitude and your generosity. Give me Proverbs 11, verse 24 uh, through 25. Proverbs 11, verse 24 through 25, and it reads, One man gives freely yet gains even more. Another withdraws unduly, but it comes to, po it comes to poverty. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be, re be uh, refreshed. The Message Bible gives it another way. The Message Bible says the world of generous, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. And the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed, and those who help others are helped. So, so in other words, you got to say, God, I thank you, Lord, that you have made me generous. I thank you, Lord, hallelujah, that I'm not just doing things to be seen. Come on here, hallelujah. Je Jesus gave the discussion, hallelujah. He said, don't be, be careful of your acts of righteousness before men. In other words, that shouldn't be your motivation just to be seen by them. 
Because if you do, then that is your reward. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We don't give. We don't do things just to keep up with the next person. We don't do things just to keep up with the Joneses. We don't do things just to imp impress and attract or entice. Hallelujah. We don't speak to manipulate, praise God, and do all these things. Hallelujah. We don't do things to impress the outside world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You got to know that you got a God in heaven that's keeping a record of everything. So it's when you give. And then the next thing, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My next point, praying. Praise the Lord. Praying. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's giving. Hallelujah. That's one threat. Praying. Bless the Lord. Come on. I said it's fundamental. It's foundational. But it works. Praise the Lord. Even with praying, Jesus makes the assumption. He assumes that we will be a people marked by the discipline of prayer. In fact, he makes the assumption here that not only will we pray, but that we will pray on a consistent and regular basis. He teaches us some things about the element of the triple threat that I want to mention tonight. Can I say something to you on this Wednesday night? Your private prayer is more important than your public prayer. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Your private prayer is more important than your public prayer. And we have to deal with this because if you're not careful, the only time we really pray is when you in public. Oh, come on here. And sometimes folks can be guilty of making a show of it. And Jesus calls those that only pray during public settings the dreaded H word, hypocrites. Come on, is that how your Bible reads? Praise the Lord. Jesus wasn't and he isn't impressed by those who can pray eloquent and grand flowing prayers only when the lights are on. Come on, only when it's seen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That, that, that is a showstopper for Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. God, God says, no, 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 no. It's not just when you can do it in front of everybody. Second thing the Lord exhorted us, praise the Lord, as the ministry of prayer is the number of words that you pray is not what matter. See, here's the thing about prayer that a lot of us miss. Come on. Prayer is supposed to be a dialogue. Come on, we just think, have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our problem. That is so true. We ought to tell him all about it. But prayer is supposed to be a dialogue. Can I teach this tonight? Hallelujah. D-I-A of that word dialogue, it means two. In other words, God isn't impressed by how many words you, we can say. Have you ever sat by somebody who prays so many words that if you wonder, can God get a word in edgewise? The number of words you pray don't necessarily get God's attention. What gets his attention that you spend time in his presence, watch this, talking and listening. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Sometimes sometime we do a whole bunch of talking, but sometimes you got to settle your soul and settle your spirit and be still and listen. Prayer is not just talking, but it's talking and listening. I don't believe there's a magical formula of how long you're supposed to pray. I think more than anything, he just longs for time with us. Come on, anybody on a consecration tonight? In fact, the model prayer that he gives for us, amen, in the Bible, praise the Lord, the model prayer can be prayed in probably less than three minutes. See, it, hallelujah, it's the listening that takes longer. Come on here. Oftentimes, it's not the talking. It's the listening that takes longer. Hallelujah. So in prayer, there should be some talking and there should be some pauses. There should be some talking and there should be some Selah moments. There should be some talking and there should be some meditation. There should be some talking and there should be some lingering. There should be some talking and then there should be some stillness. Who am I talking to out there? 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you can go through so much that you ain't got a lot of words. Come on here. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But sometimes you got to speak and say, be still my heart. Be still my soul. Hallelujah. Oftentimes it's the listening that takes longer. Oh, who am I talking to out there? Hallelujah. That's why the scripture says, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Sometimes we can talk the right words so we think, but our meditation is off. What we ponder is off. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to think about the Lord. You got to think about his goodness because you can pray and then go into worry. You can pray and then go into anxiousness. Praise the Lord. I just don't want good words. I want my meditation, my, 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 to be in accordance with what I'm praying. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, I feel the anointing, be acceptable unto you, oh, Lord, hallelujah, my strength and my redeemer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, glory to God, hallelujah, it all works together. Somebody type in, it works together. It works together. Praise the Lord. It works together. It works together. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so when you get to that point, come on here. You can actually, this is actually how you can pray all day long. Glory to God. I said this is actually how you can pray all day long. Bless the Lord. It ain't just talking. It's my meditation. Glory to God. Is I'm in and out of that thing. Come on here. Bless the Lord. I'm in it and I'm out of it. Glory to God. I'm doing my work and I got to thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm doing my work and every now and then I pause and say, Lord, I love you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm doing my work and I'm saying, God, I need you to help me. Glory to God. Anybody hearing what I'm saying tonight? Hallelujah. Glory to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. I, you know, as I was studying this, I was reading up on something. Bless the Lord. About a practice guide for basketball. And one of the pointers they said, hallelujah, that you should set goals based on the number shot, not the amount of time. So in other words, if I'm, if I'm going to practice being better at something, if, if I'm trying to practice my shooting, then I should set goal of the number of shots that I do or shots that I make, not the matter of time. Because you can literally practice for an entire hour and only take 100 shots. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And it, you may be neglecting the, 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 the certain type of shots you should be making. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I was in the gym the other day and I started working on something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That I normally don't work on. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And the Lord said to me, you can't change what you don't touch. See, when you when you want to change in a particular area, you got to learn how to stop complaining and going around it, praise the Lord, and say, you know what? I need to focus my attention on this area. Come on here. I believe, amen, that as you are consecrating, I believe that as you are fasting, you're saying, God, there's some areas in my life I know need to be touched. There's some areas in my life I know I need to pay attention to. There's some areas in my life I know I'm good over here, over here, over here, over here, but there's some things I specifically need to pay attention attention to, is that all right, so that I can get the victory in this area? But if you're going to be a triple threat, as in the game of basketball, bless the Lord, and you want to be an intentional shooter, I need to spend my time shooting. Not being all over the place. Is that all right? So a lot of times we're all over the place, but we're not paying attention to areas in our life that really needs to be checked. And really need to be changed. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So in other words, it's not just about talking, folks. You got to give more attention to how you spend your time praying. The goal is not time. It's contact and dialogue. Oh, am I helping somebody tonight? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have effective prayer in a few words just as you can have in many words. Look, look what Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 7, 8. He says, and when you pray, don't keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. 
Hallelujah. In other words, don't just be saying something just to say something. Don't just be saying something just to be deep and wonderful. Don't just be saying something. Jesus, matter of fact, you got to move into the place, not just vain reputations. Glory to God. No, sometimes you may, bless the Lord, I'll repeat some things in prayer. But that's where my heart is. Come on here. You may say, Lord, touch, touch, touch. Touch, Lord. Father, I need you to touch. God, I need you to make a way, make a way, make a way, make a way. And that's not just vain repetitions. Come on. That's where my heart is. And sometimes I may repeat some things in prayer, but that's where my spirit is. It's not just vain reputation. It's not just making up something just to say what I can say. It's not just, come on, come on, just being religious and trying to say a certain thing just to say it. Matter of fact, when you looked, when you looked, amen, at the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus repeated the same prayer three times. Hallelujah. But that wasn't a vain repetition. That was once his spirit needed a breakthrough. Come on here. Bless the Lord. He, he went and checked on the disciples, and they went to sleep, and he went back and prayed. He went and checked on them again, and he went back and prayed. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. The Bible says, so he left them and prayed a third time. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the problem in the garden... <coughs> Even though he had disciples, the problem in the garden, praise the Lord. He said, I just needed somebody that would watch, somebody that would just spend some time. I'm about to go through a trial. Come on, because that's what prayer is and intimacy. Can you just hang with me? Disciples, even if y'all don't pray, can you just be attentive with me? Can you just watch? Because Jesus loves time with you. Come on here. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, your prayer time is not necessary. I don't know why I'm going here tonight. It's not just praying 30 minutes straight with no pauses. I may pray 10, and the rest of it is worship and meditation and being still before the Lord. Jesus, he, he wasn't looking at eloquence or wordiness. Your eloquence or wordiness. It's not necessary to communicate with God. Come on. Glory to God. So many times people are so hesitant to offer prayer in public because they say, I don't know the right words to say. I, I, I don't pray like y'all. I can't, I can't do it like y'all. Come on here. Come on here. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But, but, but how many know, hallelujah, when it's sincere from your heart? Come on. You can have a five-word prayer and get major breakthrough. Why? Because it's flowing out of my heart. Or well, many people say, well, I can't pray that way, so I don't pray at all. The devil is a lie. It's not if you pray, it's when you pray. And God wants us to come to him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you got to know, you got to know because sometimes, and I got to park this because it's a threat. Your giving is a threat. Your prayer life is a threat. Come on here. And I got to deal with this tonight because sometimes the enemy will convince you that prayer isn't working. Woo! I said sometimes the enemy will convince you that prayer isn't working. Because you haven't seen the change that you're looking for. Or you haven't seen the manifestation that you're looking for. Or you haven't seen the breakthrough that you are looking for. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But, but let me help you with something. Even while you in those between times. This is something the Spirit spoke to me today. Prayer helps you manage it. Oh, come on here. <laughs> the, the reason I know prayer works because prayer helps you manage it. Come on, if I got a witness, praise God. You ought to type in, it helps me. Prayer helps me manage it. If you didn't have prayer, you would have lost it by now. If you didn't have prayer, you would have put your hair out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It was prayer that helps you manage your sanity. It was prayer that helped you, help you when your flesh wanted to go crazy and wild out. It was prayer that keeps you you that it won't lose. Praise God. Prayer helps me manage it. No, I haven't got the miracle yet, but the reason I can manage is because of prayer. Come on here. The reason I can get up another day, pray, prayer helps me manage it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Prayer helps me not tell you off. Come on. Hallelujah. Prayer. Prayer helps me not go off. Prayer keeps my mouth closed. Come on here. Prayer. Prayer. Glory to prayer helps me renew my mind. Prayer helps you manage it. 
Woo, come on. I know that's right, Brother Lamont. Yeah, prayer helps me manage it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you work in stressful jobs. How can you get up every day and keep going to it when you work in a stressful environment? Because prayer helps me manage it. Woo, my God, my God, hallelujah. Prayer will help you manage it until your season changes. Come on here, hallelujah. How you making it? A lot of prayer. How you making it? A whole lot of prayer. How you maintaining? A whole lot of prayer. Hallelujah. How's it going up? A whole lot of prayer. See, prayer will help you bypass the juniper tree. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I said prayer will help you bypass the juniper tree. Come on. You remember when the prophet Elijah wanted to give up, wish he was dead, was tired of, praise God, dealing with Jezebel and all that type of stuff? Hallelujah. Prayer will help you manage, glory to God, so that you don't go sit in a dark hole somewhere and be depressed and stay oh prayer. Prayer will help you bypass the juniper tree. Oh, I feel this tonight. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why we need fundamental folks. Glory to God. That's why I don't know. I don't always need hype church. I don't always need to come. Bless the Lord. And I get feel good and feel goosebumps. Glory to God. If I don't feel a goosebump, hallelujah, I'm going to give and I'm going to pray. It's the fundamental things. And I need word that's going to remind me, glory to God, of what's necessary. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, hallelujah, little power. No prayer. Come on, what they tell you. No power. Hallelujah. And you got to know this. Why do you have to know it? Let me calm down tonight. Why do you have to know it? Because biblical, biblical ignorance fuels demons. Woo! I said biblical ignorance fuels demons. What you don't know can and we'll hurt you. That's why the devil don't want you to pray, because he knows it's a weapon. He wants you to be ignorant of the power that you have when you call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Type it in, and I'm moving. Prayer helps me manage it. Glory to God. Prayer helps me manage these children. Prayer helps me manage my household. Prayer helps me manage in, in ministry. Prayer helps you manage. Prayer is what's keeping this vision alive. Glory to God, though it tarries. Woo, I can wait on it. Prayer helps you manage it. Prayer helps you not get thrown off when people try to throw stuff off on you. Prayer will help you discern stuff. When people want to dump on you and want to make you like you the cause of all their trauma, bless the Lord, and you the cause of everything they going through. See, this is what the Lord reminded me. Don't let dysfunctional people blame you for their dysfunction. Come on here. I said, don't let dysfunctional people blame you for their dysfunction. Hallelujah. They had, they had the dysfunction before they met you. Come on here. And you got to tell folks, you ain't going to put that on me. Hallelujah. You was dysfunctional before I met you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't allow dysfunctional people to blame you for their dysfunctional. Their dysfunctionism. Is that a word? Bless the Lord. It is tonight. Come on, you ain't going to dump that on me. Hallelujah. That thing started a long time ago. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been ministry a long time, and I've had people, bless the Lord, walk away, and they want to leave ministry and put all their bad stuff on me. No, 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 no. Bless the Lord. You had that dysfunction when you got here. You had that dysfunction before you walked in. Glory to God. God wanted to set you free, but you wanted to hang on to it. Hallelujah. Oh, it ain't my fault. That dysfunction started a long time. And you walk out of relationships and people want to dump on you like you're the cause of their problems and, and you're the cause of this and that. Don't you know? It's the devil. He's the accuser of the brethren. Praise God. No, no, no. You got to tell folks, you had that issue before you met me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That dysfunction was before you ran into me. Come on. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's one thing. I feel the anointing. Glory to God. That's one thing that, that, that you need to pray even on this consecration. God, break every dysfunctional place in my life. Every dysfunctional place that has become normal, I want you to break it. Everything that's out of order and, 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 and it looks like order, I want you to break it. 
Everything that's dysfunctional and I've normalized it, I want you to break it. And I feel by the Holy Ghost, God is coming for every dysfunction in your life. Holly, you didn't package up the dysfunction because it works for you. Glory to God. But you got to call a spade a spade and start saying, "Uh uh-uh, this ain't right. This is dysfunctional. Glory, this is a dysfunctional relationship. It's not what it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. It's not what God has ordained it to be. And I'm coming for deliverance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Let me move with this. I feel the anointing. Glory to God. But this is not the season for you to allow people to dump on you. Hallelujah. He says, when you pray. Notice in Matthew 6 says, when you pray. Not just when your pastor prays for you, but when you pray. Glory to God. Jesus is stressing that we must take responsibility and ownership of our own prayer life. It isn't enough, and in my opinion, praise the Lord, it's not just enough for you to come to church week after week and hear somebody else pray for you and consider that as your prayer life. No, 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 that's their prayer life praying for you. That's not your prayer life. I agree that helps. I agree that counts. We ought to pray for one another. Hallelujah. But the scripture talking about when you pray and when you pray often and when you pray to your father and when you pray persistently. See, unless we pray, we're not his people because he expected his people to pray. Come on, did you read your Bible? If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. Holly, see, if you his people, pray, you are people of prayer. And my house shall be called a house of prayer. Bless the Lord. Even fasting goes with prayer. It says when you won't break through, these kind go out but by fasting and by praying. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. If fasting and praying are a means to break through that God has for me, I want to undertake those disciplines and experience a breakthrough. Anybody looking for a breakthrough in your life? Hallelujah. Every person watching me, in some way, shape, form, or fashion in your life, you need a breakthrough. I need a breakthrough. You need a breakthrough. We need a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Come on here. It may be a breakthrough in your understanding of a situation. It may be a breakthrough answer to a problem. It may be a breakthrough idea, a breakthrough insight, a breakthrough in your finances. Glory to God, a breakthrough in your health. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And fasting and prayer breaks the yoke of bondage and releases Glory to God and releases and releases. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so it's not just what you do in public. It is your private devotion. It's your private devotion. Glory to God. It's some things that God's going to set in order with you. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, those that set a, uh, that those that set a long time with God grow. Those that don't stagnate. It's amazing. Every place it talked about in this scripture, giving, prayer, and fasting, it always came back in a clause about what you do in your private life with those things. See, because sometimes we've mastered church so well. Come on here. Come on here. We, we know how to do it when we come to church. But the reason we don't have victory is because we've lost our devotion life. Our devotion life is not where it needs to be. Glory to God. And that's why our flesh is out of control. Come on here. We can't walk in sanctification. We can't walk in holiness. Praise God. Because you, you, you got everything right on a Sunday or a Wednesday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No, but if you're going to stay saved in this hour, glory to God, every day of your life. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My last point, fasting. Type that in, fasting. Triple threat, giving, prayer, and fasting. Again, Jesus makes the assumption, and this is my last point, Jesus makes the assumption that his followers will fast. Fasting is the dirty F word. It's amazing. Isn't it crazy that, that you can be so engaged at work 
and you can miss a meal and never stop to think about it. But then when we call a fast, it feels like you're starving. Come on here. <laughs> You've been so caught up and didn't have time to eat and you were just such in a grind. But the minute you get on a fast, come on here, bless the Lord, and you miss a meal, it feels like you're starving. <laughs> If there was ever an indication that fasting isn't about food, it is a spiritual issue. And let me give you this real quick. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Fasting in the Bible is directly used six different times. Fasting occurred during war. In Judges 20 and 26, Israel fasted at Bethel when they were at war against Benjamin. Secondly, fasting occurred during sickness. When David's infant son was sick unto death, David fasted and wept for his dying son. Fasting, next thing, fasting was also connected to times of repentance. In Nehemiah 9, when the people heard the word of God, they repented for their sin. Hallelujah. And they also fasted. Fourthly, bless the Lord, there was fasting occurred in times of danger. Jehoshaphat fasted when they were threatened by Edom. In 2 Chronicles 20 and 3. Fifthly, fasting occurred during times of revelation. In Daniel 9, in Exodus 34, when people wanted revelation from God, they would break out into a fast. And six, glory to God, fasting went in accordance with spiritual warfare. I just need to exhort you and stir you up because you're consecrated. Jesus said that there are spiritual battles that are only won by prayer and fasting. So sometimes if we don't fast, we're not prepared to fight some wars. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on here. Don't you know we're in major warfare right now? We're in the midst of a pandemic. We're in the midst of everything. Bless the Lord. Sometimes without fasting, you don't remain in an attitude of repentance. Sometimes without fasting, you're unprepared for danger. Without fasting, sometimes we don't see and we, don't hear and we miss some revelation. And without fasting, sometimes we're lacking the power necessary to endure the spiritual warfare. Here's what I'm saying tonight. Fasting covers just about every season of our life. Oh, Jesus. That's why Jesus said when we fast, not if you fast, but when you fast, because he knew that as believers, we are, there's going to be seasons in our life, times in our life, that you're going to have to spend some time in fasting, just in case you were taking this consecration you own lightly. Tomorrow, you ought to jump on day three, bless the Lord, day three of it, and say, I got to get a little bit more serious because I understand. Fasting causes us to have focus. Fasting is more than what we do with your eyes. It's what you do with your mind. And sometimes the challenge is to refocus mentally on your goals and your dream and your desires. Fasting reveals what controls us. Oh, it, it reveals what could, you know, Jesus fasted before he went into public ministry. He was in the wilderness 40 days fasting. Is that all right? Perhaps the reason we aren't equipped for some things in public because we haven't fasted. See, we have a decision to make as a body. Are you going to rise up? Are we going to be a weak church or a strong church? Come on. Are we going to be a powerful church that's going to walk in the power of God, that's going to use the weapons, glory to God, that he's given us? Are we going to be a threat or no? Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? Come on. Hallelujah. Is that what's going to be said about your name? Jesus, I know, what's your name, but who are you? Are you going to be the who are you? No, if you're a born-again believer, and I'm not talking about a title, hell should know who you are. Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. If you're holding fast to praying, and fasting, and giving, hell ought to know who you are. Are you an easy guard? No, we got to master the triple threat. Not just one or the other. Come on here. Not just a dribbler, not a shooter. Not just a shooter, not a passer. No, we're a triple threat. I hope you hear me when I'm saying by the Holy Ghost. We may give, but we don't fast and pray. Talk, Bishop. Or we may pray, but we refuse to give and fast. Come on here. Or we fast, but we don't couple that with prayer and giving. 
come on. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Therefore, we can be easily guarded and prevented from scoring because you're not a triple threat. He said, when you give, I will rebuke the devourer. Come on, for your sake. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and called according to his, your giving, your prayer life, and your consecration. It all works together. I'm closing on this. But, but in the time, time of old and biblical times, hallelujah, even the children of Israel, they were always aware of the benefits of fasting and praying because each time they fasted, they saw an awesome move of God. Moses in Exodus 34, verse 27 and 28, it revealed they waited for the Lord 40 days and 40 nights while receiving the Ten Commandments. In Judges, the 20th chapter, the children of Israel were in battle. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And they were losing the battle. The Bible said they fasted and sought the Lord. And one day after the fast, God gave them the victory. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, another example in 2 Chronicles 20 and 3, Jehoshaphat de 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 declared a fast. Hallelujah. When the Moabites and the Amorites rose up against them, they fasted and offered praise to God, and God gave them a great victory. Now, when you read that text, you just talk about how they shouted. Hallelujah. And, and it produced a great ambushment against enemy. They didn't just shout. They didn't just give God a praise. They fasted and prayed. See, you got to know what's working for you. Glory to God. Glory to God. You got to tell folks, I didn't get this way because I'm good. Come on here. I didn't get this way because I'm special. God ain't moving me for me just because. No, no, no. Hallelujah. I'm a giver. Come on. I got seed in the ground. I got a prayer life. I know how to call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I got a fasting life. Last one, look at old Esther. You know Esther. She, she was of the Jewish nation. The, the whole nation was about to be completely wiped out. And you know Esther went in and talked, and she said, if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to see the king. If I perish, I perish. And the reason the Lord gave them great victory is because three days before, she declared a three-day and three-night absolute fast and left the rest to the Lord. If I perish, let me perish. So in other words, God didn't just give victory. <clears throat> it was a fast that went forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you, you have to move into that place. God will heighten your discernment when doing times of consecration. Hallelujah. A greater sensitivity during time of consecration. It's a major byproduct of fasting because you're turning down the desires of your flesh. Come on. Bless the Lord. God seems to give us opportunity as we fast to take a look again at our lives, to take a look again at the world around us and discern what is good and evil. Sometimes you need to pause. Come on here and settle you and settle your spirit so you can look again at this season of your life. So you can look again at the world that's going on around you. And when you've been walking in fear, you can look again and let faith rise up. Stuff that you hadn't been enlightened on, you can look again. And now you got the sensitivity of God and the discernment of God, and you can discern what is good and evil. Fasting leads to greater intimacy. When we deny our carnal nature in order to fulfill the desires of God, what he wills for our lives can be found through fasting and praying. Our spirit and our soul experiences joy because of fasting. It's a decision to momentarily die to our flesh to fulfill a greater desire. Mark 2 and 20, and I'm closing. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in that day. Hallelujah. As you surrender in consecration, our comfort to gain, Spiritual clarity. Anybody need clarity in some areas? Why, why does it seem like the Lord, you know, calls this out of the blue consecration? Because if you're not careful, our 21st century culture can lead us to become numb to what matters to God. Yet praying through a fast challenges us to sharpen our spiritual discernment. See, we can fast from things and we can fast for things. Oh, let me say that again. We can fast from things and we can fast for things. We can fast. 
from things, food, social media, television, food, a negative mindset. Come on. Negative confession. Come on here. And we can fast four things. Our loved ones, breakthrough, deliverance, our local church, our neighborhoods, the community, the world. We gain wisdom and guidance through fasting. We're able to discern the will of God through fasting and praying. And we'll be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. Oh, you heard what I'm saying tonight. When we deny our flesh, our spiritual cravings are fortified. See, see, when, when you get in God real good, come on. Glory, have a giving life, have a prayer life, and a fasting life. You, you'll find the Holy Spirit getting all up in your business. Showing you the error of your ways. Showing you in places you've been in rebellion. Showing you in places you've been dishonorable. Showing you places that you've had lack of submission. You start repenting. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Not just on your knees. When you get off your knees, you get up, praise God, and start going repenting to people. Glory to God. You start getting things right. You start righting wrongs. Glory to God. Why? Because what I couldn't see in the last season, because I was so full of myself and full of carnality and full of flesh, now I begin to see. Now the conviction of God can come on some areas. Come on here. Now I have a desire to get right. Now I have a desire. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To get my life in order. And he'll expose and reveal places in my life that has been dysfunctional. Places in my life that I've been out of alignment. And then you can start thinking, I can see clearly now because the rain is going. Glory, because now the flesh has been cut off your ear. Come on here. That you've been dull of hearing. Hallelujah. And dull of understanding. Now God will begin to strengthen you in areas. And you become blessed. Don't tell me you consecrating and staying the same. Don't tell me you consecrating glory to God and not drawing nigh to God. We're not doing something right. You can't just fast. You got to fast and pray. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They're coupled together. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anna, prophetess of God, blessed in the Bible. She committed herself in the temple for years and years and years, fasting and praying. Glory to God, fasting and praying. It's time for us to set our heart to the fundamental things. Glory to God, our giving, our prayer life, and fasting. God wants us solid. Come on. He wants us safe and secure. He wants us solid as a rock and having a firm foundation. Yes, what we do corporately is so important, but it, it does not take away, glory to God, for our private devotion. Come on. So if I can't get nobody else to touch and agree with me, I know how to go to God myself, and I'm not just going to talk, but I'm going to talk and listen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody type it in, triple threat, triple threat, triple threat. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for grace tonight. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your power as I've taught your people your word tonight. I thank you that your sheep hear your voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. I thank you that we've heard your word tonight and we'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Thank you that forever, oh Lord, your word is established. Your word is settled in our hearts. And I thank you, Lord, that you keep us consistent to the ministry of giving, the ministry of prayer, and the ministry of fasting. In the name of Jesus, thank you that you're working a work in our days and you're building us up where we weep. Hallelujah. You're building us up where we weep. Glory to God. You're making us stronger and stronger. You're making us more fortitude. And we'll rise up and be the people you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.